So today's session is all about a webinar series that already exists. Um, and I'm just gonna go over why we created it and what it is, who it's for, and what it covers. And then at the end of the session, I'm gonna show you how to access that resource um, for free at any time. And as some of you may know, um, this resource is not just helpful for um, parents and families of children with the hearing loss, but also any child birth to grade three for helping with language development um, and communication. So back when I moved back to Newfoundland um, over a year ago, I got involved with Child Newfoundland um, and tried to advocate for some more programming, especially in the early years of learning and listening. Um, I'm very passionate about that area um, of work with children with a hearing loss. Um, I had lived away for several years. Um, I lived in BC for nine years where I worked at a center for children with hearing loss, um, helping, helping them develop language and learning um, through a cognitive approach. So lots of hands-on and experiential learning. Um, and the last four years there, I worked specifically with children um, birth to four, age four or five. So getting them ready for preschool, getting them ready for kindergarten and helping them learn and speak their first words and communicate effectively, regardless of their hearing loss, regardless of any language delay um, or risks they might've been at for development. So this is for literally anyone who wants to learn about how to help the children in their life um, develop language and communication. So throughout the webinar series that you'll have access to after this, there were four topics. Um, we, we chose four topics because there's so much language jam-packed in those. I just went back to this slide because I wanted to just highlight the reason that we're doing this now as well. So I talked about who it's for, but um, as most of you know, this May is May in general is Better Speech and Hearing Month. Um, so any professional that works with children with um, language delay um, or speech delay is really advocating during this time of year to help families and professionals access resources to help those children succeed. Um, I developed this set of webinars um, with four topics, as I said, and we did it over six um, sessions. Um, it covers from birth to grade three and a range of topics. The reason I just I um, chose these topics and why we did this was because children during their early years of development, the first months, the first years, they're really spongy, I like to call them. So they're soaking up all that information. And if they don't get that information, then it's not soaked up and it's less likely to, um, to be used and learned later in life. So we really wanna take advantage of those moments that we have when they are so young. And also during this time, kids are often home with their parents, especially the first year. Um, one parent or both are often on leave. Um, so you have all this time at home that you're adjusting and there's so much learning and language involved in that time together to help them prep them for school. We don't want to wait until they get to a group setting or they get to a, a classroom teacher. We want to help them develop their language and skills overall before then. So that's why I feel very passionate about this is that that the early years are so spongy. The first three years of a child's life, they are the spongiest sponge there ever was. Um, so that's what we want to take advantage of. And through these four topics, they are reading, well, reading and literacy, which goes beyond reading, um, independent skills, play skills, and outdoor learning. Um, I chose those topics because they have so much opportunity in them for everyday learning through the routines and 
um, activities that you do in your everyday life. You don't need books like textbooks. You don't need a specific set of tools. Um, you don't need to be a teacher. You don't need to be a medical professional. You have all these things at your fingertips and I just wanna empower you as families to use them and help your child develop. So I'll just go through today kind of a premise behind each topic and what you'll get out of that. And then I'll show you how to access that for future use. So we chose our reading and beyond topic. This is just the um, front slide for the birth to four years. But in this portion of the course, there are two webinars, one for birth to four and one for, for um, kindergarten to grade three. So the reason I put this in a place specifically for hearing loss was there are, there are risks for um, literacy development for children with a hearing loss. Um, hearing loss affects your acoustic access to critical sounds. So those speech sounds that we hear that tell us meaning, for example, like the sound tells us possession, you know, mommy's shoes, or it also tells us plurals. So I want one pen, two pens. They're very hard to hear um, and critical for meaning, but also harder to hear in an acoustic, acoustically unfriendly or loud environment. So, um, children with a hearing loss are at risk of um, vocabulary delay because they can't always hear the words that are being said. Um, and children in general, fun fact, children in general need to hear a word around 12 times um, to use it and learn it and understand it. So children with a hearing loss or another language or speech delay need to hear that double, if not triple the amount of times. And they need to hear it during a meaningful experience as well. So that's what this course is gonna teach you. Um, they are at risk of sentence comprehension and production. And so verbal and written um, delays as well. So we want to go above and beyond to help them not have those de delays as they develop by giving them opportunities to learn at home. Um, as I had talked about, and you'll learn through this course, this is the, these are again, just sample slides, portions of the course that I wanted to highlight. Um, when I, when you hear reading, often parents say, well, I read lots of books or my child doesn't like to read or they don't like to listen to books, but it's not just reading books and you don't have to read the books, the words in the book, you can make up your own words. Um, but there's so much more to reading than just books. And I love books, of course I do. Um, but think outside the box. You can be reading shopping lists. You can read text messages. We all know we have our phones on us all the time. Um, reading text messages to let them know that, um, you know, grandma messaged and this is what she said. So they're learning that written language and um, print is giving us meaning and is a form of communication. You can read the food containers that you have, signs around the park. Um, you can read your mail, photo albums and scrapbooks you can tell stories about even though they don't have words on them. Um, that develops the narrative and telling of a story. Um, school notes and their agenda. So that's a great one for getting ready for school and making them a part of what's coming home and the communication between home and school. It's important with reading before I move on to independence. It's important with reading to make sure that we are making reading and literacy and language fun and not rote or drill. Any skill that is academic for that matter. Um, your kids are going to get more frustrated with you if you're coming at them with, with flashcards a lot faster than they are going to get frustrated with you if you are repeating words in a fun way and singing them and um, you know, incorporating those into everyday learning and language. Um, and remembering that I talk about in this course and in many of these that 
the more you repeat, the more you narrate your life and all the, the opportunity for language that is around you, the more your child is going to use that language. Um, children do as they see, you know, so your behaviors matter and they say as they hear. So the more you he they hear it, the more likely they're going to use it. So then we looked at independent skills and I covered again with this one, um, there's two webinars in the course that I'll, we'll, you'll have access to, um, one for birth to four and one for kindergarten to grade three. Um, but independence starts right as an infant. You know, there are ways that you can incorporate um, skills into a model, your biggest model. You are their biggest model at that age. So um, even as an infant and when they're sat in a high chair, um, there's ways that you can incorporate independence. So I de definitely cover that in this course as well. Um, so why are, in, why are independent skills important, especially for ch children with hearing loss or any other delay or special need um, neuro neurodiversity? So one of the first ways children develop skills is to plan out and carry out daily tasks, which you're doing every day and the tasks just get bigger when you have a baby. So incorporating them into those and language into those tasks is gonna help your baby. Um, it's important for them to develop age appropriateness, no matter if they have a language delay, you want them to, to be at par with their peers. So in order to get there, we need to help empower them and encourage them to be independent. Um, this topic also covers expectations in preschool and expectations in the classroom. Um, children with a hearing loss, just like everyone else in the classroom are going to have to participate in the group and you know, not everything's going to be done for them. So we want to empower them. Um, also, it's important to note that when self-care skills are difficult, it can affect social emotional relationships and development and how they feel about themselves. So, you know, going to a sleepover or going um, to a birthday party, if they're not taught to feed themselves and take care of themselves and speak up for themselves, um, then they, they're set aside from their peers and they, they feel a low sense of self. Um, most importantly for independence, children with a hearing loss who, are, who feel confident and independent are way more likely to speak up for their needs and advocate in the classroom. And some of you might be thinking, oh my gosh, like my little one is so independent. It's like, I can't do anything for them. They want to do everything themselves. And that can be frustrating as a parent, I know. Um, but if your child is has a challenge like hearing loss or another special need, then they're better for it. They're more likely to speak up and they might be a little bit over independent as a youngster, but um, way more likely to not um, to not just fall through the cracks later on. So we really want to encourage those independent skills. Another topic we covered was um, the play skill development. So with this one, it's chunked into one big webinar um, for birth to grade three, and then show some differentiation um, and checklists throughout. Um, there's so much language involved in play and it's not, you can't just say, oh, you have to share or, um, you know, it's my turn now and expect them to understand the concept of sharing that it means to give and take and not just to run off with the toy that you, um, you are given. I always use that example, you know, as, as, as adults, we often um, just to get away from any sort of confrontation or, disagreement and be a people pleaser when we're at the playground. If your child's playing on a swing or with a ball, um, it's often the case that when another child comes along and wants it, we'll say, you have to share, but why? You know, 
and what does sharing mean? If they learn that when you say they have to share and they give the ball to said child and the child runs off with it and you never see it again, that's not sharing. That's just giving up what you had and not standing up for yourself. So modeling those skills involves language and learning. So teaching them how to say, I'm using this right now. Um, can I play with that? Can I have a turn? One more minute. Um, and entering play and participating in play effectively with their peers. And I know it's so important to parents for their kids to have friends. You know, that's something I hear a lot of the time when I'm doing goals with families. I'll ask them, what do you want for your child? And they will say, I just want them to be happy and have friends. So in order to do that, they need to feel confident, as we talked about in our independence um, topic, and they need to know how to enter play and feel confident doing that. So that's covered in this um, topic in the webinar series. So I just wanted to put this slide up about hearing loss and play skills. <clears throat> and some of these um, <clears throat> apply to other um, diagnosis with language delay as well. For hearing specifically, um, a child with a hearing loss, even if they're wearing hearing aids, their hearing aids, as you know, can amplify everything makes it hard if there's a lot of background noise, children screaming, toys banging together. It makes it hard for them to hear whispers or conversation of their peers. Um, if someone's speaking on um, next to them and they're not speaking loudly or there's a, a competing noise, they might not hear a child call their name um, or ask them a question and then their peers tend to feel like they're being ignored. Um, also, children with a hearing loss need explicit teaching. It's harder for them to um, incidentally learn. So um, to overhear, like through a conversation, um, you'll often, if you have a child that doesn't have a hearing loss um, and you're on the phone and they're off way in the playroom and you think they can't hear you and then you go back into the room and they say oh why is grandma coming for supper or whatever um and you're like how did you hear that you know it's it's harder for a child with hearing loss to overhear and to incidentally learn because of all the noise um competition so explicitly teaching these play skills and modeling them so they can feel safe to use them with their peers is what you need to, what is helpful for you to do as parents and families um, to make sure that they are involved with their peers once they enter that group um, setting. You know, it doesn't just, we like, as I said before, we can't just wait until they're in a group, can't wait until they have a teacher to guide them, to teach them these skills. And there's so many ways you can um, do that at home as you'll learn through this um, webinar series. It's, I, I provide with a, a lot of um, hands-on and easy resources that you have at your fingertips. As I said before, when I developed this series, I was, I made sure that parents didn't have to go out and buy a bunch of resources or buy a bunch of things and that they can utilize things in their everyday life and activities and typical household items um, without having to feel the weight of anything extra. So you're just using um, what you're what you already are doing. Um, this is also I wanted to point out for any e English as a second language learner um, or other delays and other diagnoses, as I mentioned, that have social or communication. Um, challenges. So thinking about that is, is all those areas need extra modeling and extra explicit teaching um, for them to learn these skills. And the last section of the course that I um, created was outdoor learning for littles. So I am a very nature-driven person. We live 
in Newfoundland, there's nature all around us. The weather changes drastically every single day. Um, there's so much to do and learn in the outdoors. I know that as parents as well, families, grandparents, um, you are often outdoors to get a break from your everyday tasks and everyday um, setting, you know? So when you're on those walks, when you're at the park, when you're at the playground, um, this webinar helps empower you to use all the language that's around you in many ways to help your child develop communication and learning. So just as a little over um, example, the impact of outdoor time as well has so much, um, um, so many effects on learning and development in general, um, just for children and human beings. So, um, and also just something to keep in mind that that affects you as a parent, as a grandparent, as any sort of caretaker, um, looking after kids can be stressful, can be tiring. So this also being outdoors also helps your own mental health um, and that um, helps you to give more at the end of the day and to um, promote overall wellness. So outdoors have, has lots of opportunities for new language and concepts. As I said, there's always change. There's science, there's math, there's so many things at our fingertips and it's free. As I, as I mentioned before, I wanted to cover things that parents didn't have to go out and feel like they had to buy some silly toy for 50 bucks, you know, um, that it's all at your fingertips. Um, overall, it helps with men mental and physical health, um, increased motor skills. Children who spend a lot of time outdoors are known to um, develop a higher balance skills and fine motor, gross motor skills, coordination. So those are all great things. Um, help promote, promote a good sleep. And parents, we know you want your babies to sleep, <laughs> um, especially kids who are uh, transitioning from nap um, and coming out of their naps, you know, getting ready for kindergarten. Um, outdoor time is a great time to learn after school or after um, work. And then they have a good sleep as well, which in inevitably helps them learn when they are in school or in a group organization. Um, it can decrease challenging behavior behaviors. So children, um, children with a hearing loss, but also children in general sometimes have some sensory um, challenges. Um, they can become overstimulated, especially if they're in school um, in the bright lights and the noise all day long. Um, that can that overstimulation can lead to challenging behaviors and acting out if they um, don't have that outlet. So the outdoors provides us with that and helps with those behaviors, helps them to become more settled, um, more mindful. Outdoors and nature promotes curiosity and risky play. So there's lots to, to think about and talk about, but also you can jump um, play around with them um you know stepping on stones across a brook or I mean, they might fall in but they're they're going to be fine you know um you can play around with climbing trees or balancing on a log so there's lots of stuff happening there and it creates respect for the environment so that gratitude and overall respect for nature and taking care of the resource that's around us comes from spending time outdoors as well. There are lots of ways, I put this slide in just um, to give you a little taste of, of some of the stuff I cover in the webinar series. Um, I, I show some songs that we do to, to wake up our senses and discuss our senses. There's so much to talk about when it comes to I, what I see, what I hear, what I smell, um, what I feel outdoors. Um, I talk about using cognitive-based questions that are not closed. So what do you see? What do you hear? Rather than what's that opens up a world of language. Um, 
I cover some ways to bring indoor activities, um, bring outdoor activities inside or bring indoor activities outside. So taking pieces of nature to bring inside to do a craft or um, taking out indoor activities like reading, for example, um, snack time, taking them outdoors. And that provides your child, especially when you're working with a child with hearing loss and they're learning to listen in many different environments, um, taking like reading, um, art or snack time outside helps them, their brains learn to listen in a noisy environment and to filter out background noise in a safe place with you, with their family, where they know that it's okay to struggle a little bit. Um, and then that helps prep them for when they go into the big wide world and they go to classrooms. Um, that's, it's great for their brain. There's lots of word classes outside, nouns, verbs, descriptors, time, location. So I cover ways to incorporate that. There's outdoor learning activities, again, free, so much fun. You can do them over and over and over. Um, and I encourage you to do everything that's in these webinars to do it over and over and over. Um, kids love repetition and that's really how they learn and become confident. So in this um, webinar, you'll also see some of these activities um, and it was just great, a great little resource coming up for summer because you'll be spending a lot more time outdoors, I hope. So before I cover my contact information, I'm just going to um, stop sharing the screen and reshare because I want to show you how you're going to access this course. So, um, all right. So hopefully you can see what I see here. This, I just wanted to show you how to access the course now. So you can go online from the link. If you got the poster from today's event, you can go online and um, enroll for free. It'll bring you to the actual page. But I also just wanted to show you how to get there from the Canadian Heart of Hearing Association's webpage. So you can, um, so you, you know how to do that, do that in case um, you missed that link or whatever. So when you go to chanewfoundland.ca, it's up here. If you just search Canadian Heart of Hearing or Cha Newfoundland, you will get it through Google as well. But the website is um, chha-nl.ca. And along the top, you'll find learning resources. We're just gonna click that. And then as you scroll down, there's lots of resources here. Um, you know, that's something else to point out that um, if you're joining us today, um, this is not just the only resource that is available to you. I mean, these resources are free and your child doesn't have to be, um, doesn't have to have a hearing loss for you to access them. Um, so if you feel like anyone in your life can benefit from this, then it's always great if you think about resources to, to give families that, that might be struggling with a similar challenge, you know, like any sort of communication delay, they sometimes have similarities with hearing loss. So this is a great resource for you. Um, and that's another reason behind this whole, the premise of this um, webinar today, it's, it's kind of funny because it's, it's a webinar about a webinar kind of thing. Um, but the reason we're doing that now is because some of you weren't around, maybe didn't know about the webinar series when we did it live last year. Um, and there's so many resources um, available to you as families and you often don't know about them. So Better Speech and Hearing Month, we really want to empower families to get those resources and use those resources um, because often families just don't know where to look. So here we go. As I said, we're gonna go to the learning resources, which we did that already. I just went off on a little tangent. Um, then you'll find Listen and Learn. You click Learn More. 
and then you'll just press enroll for free. It'll ask you a couple questions and then you'll be enrolled in the course. So that's what it looks like. I wanted to show you how to get through it. And then <clears throat> I'm already enrolled. So I'm gonna go up and go to my own page. I can do that. So once you're enrolled, it's, um, it brings you to like a little course page. Um, so you can just press resume course. Now up at the top, you'll see like, it, it tells you how much of the course you've completed as well. So I've gone through and watched some of the videos, of course. Um, for each topic there, uh, well, there's an introduction about me, I guess, and, and why we developed this program. And then it goes through each lesson. So for reading and beyond, as well as fostering independence, as I said, there are two videos, one for birth to four and one for kindergarten to grade three. Also, this is helpful for families who have children beyond grade three, like that's just a number. If you feel like you have someone in your family that um, maybe could use with a repetition of these skills, um, but they're in grade five or they're in grade six or whatever, um, by all means, share it. Um, so each course has the video you can click and you can watch the video and continue. You can mark incomplete. There's no tests or anything. Um, and you can go back and look at them anytime. So you have the videos in each one and then the resources, a list of links that are easily accessible um, within the links. Some of them are quoted throughout the videos um, and some of them are just extra um, resources or activities that I use or that I feel like are helpful for, for families, especially um, when it gets to independence and play skills. I put in some checklists there. Um, Parents are often looking for checklists and kind of to gauge where their child should be at and what they should be working on, what's appropriate for their age. Um, so that's all there in the resources. As I said, you can go right on through each of the videos and the resources. And these the videos are from what we had um, recorded live um, back last year. So um, I hope you enjoy that. And here's my contact information. I put down um, an email that I created specifically for these resources and for this program. So, um, so none of your emails go missing or go to my spam um, if it was sent to my work email. So you can write this down. Here is my email. And by all means, I am happy to help um, answer questions, go through resources with you, um, any way I can help provide support um, and empower you to use these activities and to help your child learn language and communication um, at such a young age. It's so important and I'm passionate about it. So by all means, reach out anytime. And I'll just open it up now to Andrea.